we must be bold enough to speak in the name of the Lord. God will help us. Amen. I have so many professors in this class. You know, from the beginning, from the first contribution up to now. Wow. I, I'm, I'm a special teacher. Of, amen. Thank you so much, madam. Now, um, you know the Pharisees were great teachers in those days. And they thought they knew it all. They arrogated unto themselves knowledge of all problems and solutions at that time. But remember what Jesus told them. Say, woe unto you, the Pharisees. Because they got it wrong. Let's move quickly to question three. Please bear with me if you still have other because of time. How can we proclaim the kingship of Christ on earth? From Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Second Timothy from verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 8. Can we quickly read the scriptures? And I'll have quickly the contributions. The scriptures. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Can anybody read? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so verse 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Anybody please? And then we can, madam please. Okay, somebody else is here. Eight. It says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Thank you. Madam, sorry, you know you didn't have a microphone, so that's why. Uh... <laughs> okay, let's take contributions very quickly. How can we sorry. proclaim the kingship of Christ on earth? From these two scriptures, quickly. Any contributions, please? You want to speak? Thank you, madam. Praise God. Hallelujah. We can proclaim the kingship of Jesus Christ, arrogating everything we are able to do unto him, be it in the private sphere or in the, in the public sphere. And when the word of God has to be preached, we should not be ashamed to preach it. Where, wherever we find ourselves, in the secular world especially, Especially when we are among the, 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 in the midst of unbelievers. We should not be ashamed to let them identify us with Christ. You know, some of us, I mean, some, some Christians, when it's, they are in social circle, they don't talk about Jesus. When they are talking about um, issues in the office, they don't in any way try to identify, I mean, re relate it to Christ. Everything that has to do with us must you know, be Christ-related. And when we have cause to talk, we should talk. And when we see people going astray, we should not be ashamed or afraid to tell them to, you know, come the way of the Lord, to let them know that Christ has died for this thing they are doing, and in Christ they can overcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. You know, truly, we shouldn't be ashamed. In fact, in those days when we were younger, it used to be very glamorous to answer, to say, I'm born again. I remember when I was looking for a wife, and uh, the first uh, one of the ladies I was talking to, immediately I started chatting. She asked me, are you born again? Before I continued my chatting, you know, let me hear an amen. Any further contributions, please? In addition, please, go ahead. In addition to what Madam just said, yes. here, simple truth, true evangelism and the manifestation of the power of God. Thank you so you much, Inka. We appreciate you. Madam? Mrs. Temilolu Ogunigwe. The benefit of proclaiming the kingship of Christ is uh, a whole lot. From the salvation that we know that, you know, is a complete package. And then denying, you know, talking about the repercussion of denying his kingship. I don't know the particular scripture, but it says that if we deny him here on earth, then he will deny some people in heaven. And that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, madam. Now, we move to the last question. Question four. What is the benefit of proclaiming the kingship of Christ and the repercussion of denying his kingship? Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. Matthew chapter 10, 
32 and 33, and then Romans chapter 10, verse 9. We need to move very fast because time is fast spent. The procession is not here, so let's continue. Can anybody read Matthew chapter 10, 32 to 33? You have ready? Whoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Thank you so much, madam. The second scripture, Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Quickly, Romans chapter 10 verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised you, you will be saved. Thank you so much. Let's go straight into the answers. What is the benefit of proclaiming the kingship of Christ and the repercussions of denying his kingship? It was in the scripture that Madame read. So let's just contribute very quickly and we round up. Quickly. Any contributions? What from what she read? He said, look, if you deny me, do they? I will also deny you. So what is invariably is that if you accept Christ, Christ will accept you. If you deny him on the last day, he will also deny you. God will help all of us in Jesus' name. Conclusion, despite his lowly ride, Pharisees still attempted to silence the crowd from acknowledging the kingship of Christ. As Christians, we may meet such oppositions on our earthly race while proclaiming the gospel. Nevertheless, we should never stop nor be ashamed because no one can stop the kingship of Jesus Christ. Food for thoughts. Can we all take it together, please? When Christ rules the heart, the mouth proclaims him as king of kings. Memory verse. Let's take it together again. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him will I also confess before the Father who is in heaven. I want to thank all of us for our active participation. I told us that we had so many professors in this class. And I'm so thrilled that we all had these powerful contributions to this training, to this teaching. Thank you very much. Shall we bow down our heads in prayer? Simon Upwe, can you lead us in prayer, sir? Faithful Father, we thank you for the privilege of studying at your feet. Guide us, O Lord, to be bold, to share, and testify of your goodness in our lives. To the glory of your name, for we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, sir. Please, let's just be reminded that the procession, please, let's join the procession, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma.
Good morning, church, and welcome to the house of God this Palm Sunday. The Lord be with you. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as a savior to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love so that united with him in his suffering, we may share his risen life. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ and for the benefit of your church, all your children that will be bearing these palms, we consecrate them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we said, as, as your children take this palm, it will be unto them a sign of victory. Amen. Victory over sin, Amen. victory over the devil, Amen. victory over the world, Amen. victory over sicknesses and every limitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, blessed Redeemer, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We will please ask that members of the Gate of Stewart should please come and get these palms so that we can give to as many as who need them. I think that should be enough. Praise the Lord. 
as soon as the pumps goes round, we'll be going for the procession. And we'll come back to continue the service.
Hallelujah. 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 In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome all, everyone back to the church. Those that were not able to do the trekking, we appreciate you. And those that did the trekking, we thank you so very much. We pray that all of us, by this time next year, you will be stronger. Amen. You will be headier. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the glory and the power of God will continue to show forth in your life and in your household in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And because you have done this for the Lord, the Lord will honor you. Amen. The Lord will show forth for you at every point of your needs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will see the hand of God moving positively in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And your family members, wherever they are under heaven, the banner of the Lord will be over them. Amen. And our joy will know no end in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Lord, we appreciate all of you. Thank you so very much, and the Lord God will continue to honor you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven, and to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and shew forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Together, we shall humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Okay, o God, our Father, we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved thee with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy upon us, we beseech thee. Cleanse us from our sins and help us to overcome our faults through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to God, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Praise ye the Lord.
Please sit for the reading. Old Testament reading for this service is taken from Zechariah chapter 9, from verses 9 to 12. I read. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a cloth, the fowl of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the end of the heads. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pits. Return to the stronghold, your prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Can we sing one more time? Oh, come, let us adore
Can we lift our voice and declare? Hosanna in the highest.
Put your hands together for Jesus. The New Testament reading is taken from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 13. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 13. I read, Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite to you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Lose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be filled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fall of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And the very great multitudes spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who were before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves. This is the word of the Lord.
implicit. In the name of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we welcome you again to this special Sunday in commemoration of the Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is a Christian movable feast that takes place on the Sunday before Easter. It is referred to as movable feast because it doesn't have a fixed date like the Christmas day which takes place on 25th of December of every year. The feast of Palm Sunday commemorates Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem as a king. This event is mentioned in all the Synoptic Gospels. It was also prophesied by Zechariah. In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, where it is written, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fall of an ass. So this is also a fulfillment of a prophecy. And this prophecy was given 500 years before Christ was born. The name Palm Sunday originates from the palm fronts waved by crowds to greet and honor Jesus Christ as he entered Jerusalem. The Palm Sunday marks the beginning of the last week of the Lenten season. Also, the Palm Sunday marks the first day of the Holy Week. Most of the events and the experiences of our Lord Jesus Christ in his last days on earth are reenacted during the Holy Week. These events include his trial by Pontius Pilate, the celebration of the Passover feast on the Monday Thursday. The Palm Sunday also is referred to as Passion Sunday, and the Holy Week referred to as Holy Week, I mean Passion Week. This day, so this finally, this event of, of the Passion Week that begins tomorrow, finally culminates on the Easter day, which is next Sunday. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another privilege to celebrate the Palm Sunday. Speak through me, O Lord, to your children. Let your word come to us in power. Let your word break us and remold us into what you want us to be. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The theme for our message is having the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ. And we take our text from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. I read the amplified version. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, amplified version. It says, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Mindset is a mental attitude or inclination towards something. The mindset of an individual is a set of beliefs that shape how that individual makes sense of the world and himself or herself. The mindset influences how an individual thinks, how he feels, how he behaves in any given situation. In John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus Christ said, My food is to do the will of my my food is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Also in John chapter 6, verse 38, he said, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him 
who sent me. From these passages, we will realize that the mental attitude and inclination of Jesus Christ towards his ministry on earth was to do the will of his Father, whatever it takes him. That was why he took the steps taken to accomplish that particular task, his mission on earth. I want to go through Philippians chapter 2, 5 to 8 again in Amplified Version so that we see the steps Jesus Christ undertook to accomplish the purpose of his coming here on earth. It says, let this same attitude and purpose, humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example. Who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equal, equality with God as a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained, but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant, a slave, in that he became like men and was born a human being. Verse 8, and after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even death on the cross. The mindset of Jesus Christ was to sacrifice everything about himself for the purpose of doing the will of God. It is written of him that he stripped himself of all privileges and dignities and assumed the position of a slave. Another translation said he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave. Now back to our topic of today, having the mindset of, of Christ. That means having the same attitude and inclination as Christ has towards God and his will. First of all, Jesus Christ realized who he was. He realized that he was here for a purpose. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Based on the understanding of his manifesto, because this is referred to as, as Jesus Christ's manifesto, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. We are familiar with that passage. So based on his understanding of this, he came up with a plan and determination to achieve that according to the will of God. So in order to have the mindset of Christ, we must first of all realize who we are in Christ Jesus. We must identify with the saving grace of Christ by accepting him as our Lord and Savior. That is the first step. In Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, the Bible says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. The Spirit of God bears witness with that spirit in us that we are his children and we are joined heirs with Christ. That means we are the same family of God with Christ. For us to have the mindset of Christ, we must belong to the same family. For us to share his manifesto, in political parlance, we must belong to the same political party. Praise the Lord. You can be on the opposite side and share the mindset of another side. Romans chapter 8, verse 11 says, NIV, 
And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your immortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. That is to say that if the spirit that lives in Jesus Christ is the same spirit that lives in you, that lives in me, the personality of Jesus Christ will also manifest in you. That is the personality, it is the personality of Jesus that makes him what he is. His attitude, his character developed as a result of his attitude is what, is, what made his personality. He is humility personified. So, if the spirit that is in Christ Jesus is in us, is in you, is in me, we will manifest the same personality. Praise the Lord. We have the same attitude, the same mindset, the same thought process, and the same action in similar situations. We read so much about Jesus Christ, how he saved. Jesus Christ had the spirit of service he saved. He was selfless. He never took any glory to himself. Even when he had done something, he removes himself and he gives glory to God. He does not attribute any glory to himself. Jesus Christ was obedient. And like I said, he was humility personified. These are the characters of Christ. And if we have the same personality, if the same spirit that is in him and rules him and guides him and directs him is in us doing the same thing, we will manifest the same characteristics. Praise the Lord. Having said all that, I want us to have this understanding that it is because of humility that Christ accomplished all that he did. He humbled himself. He obeyed Christ. The Bible said that he obeyed the hum in humble obedience. He died on the cross. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, New Living Translation, the Bible said, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on cross. Verse 9 says, Therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above other names. Praise the Lord. Now, because of the humility of Christ, he was able to serve Christ, to serve God, to beg of God. He was willing, even when it was difficult, we knew what happened when he was at the, at the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying, he was about to, you know, the, the time had come for him to be arrested and crucified. He saw all that he was to pass through. Humanly speaking, he didn't want to go, he didn't want to proceed further, but he prayed a prayer. God, if it is possible, let this cup pass over. But if not, let your will be done. Such as a submission can only come from one who has a humble spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, I said it was because of his humility. In verse 9 of where we read in Philippians, the Bible said, God elevated him to the place of honor after he has obeyed and completed his ministry. Humility opens, you know, the humility grants us favor before God. Humility draws us close to God. I want us, I want, please, can you give us Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15? Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. It says, The high and lofty one who lives in eternity, the holy one, says this, 
I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contract and humble. When you have a humble spirit, God brings you close to himself. His place is high, highly lifted up. But in that place, the only people, the only set of people he draws close to himself are those with contrary spirits, with contrary spirits, and with humble hearts. Praise the Lord. Now, it was God's will that Jesus Christ died for sin of humanity. Jesus Christ was willing to obey this will of God. But before that, he stripped himself of all privileges he had as God. He emptied himself of his personality and took up a position as a slave. He humbled himself and obeyed God. Because of this humble obedience, God exalted him how to the place of highest honor. God still honors humility today. He honors humility. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If my people, who are called by my, by my name, shall do what? It is only the time you humble yourself that God can give you a listening ear. It is not by prayer alone. You can pray and have a breakthrough. Remember, when Christ was on earth, he had a direct contact with God. At any point in time, where he is there to say any prayer, the Bible says, we say, he looks up and prays. At the grave of Lazarus, he looked up and prayed. When he was to feed the 5,000, he just had two loaves and five fishes. He looked up and prayed. He had direct contact. So for us to establish that level of um, relationship with God, we must have the mind of Christ, which is spirit of humility. Praise the Lord. Yeah, humility is the key to answer prayer. Humility comes before prayer. Without humility, ordinary prayer will not suffice. The heart of God is open to the humble. Jesus Christ had the spirit of humility. Our text says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. The mind of St. Paul, while writing this letter, is that we should all have the spirit of humility as Christ had. In conclusion, I want to say, that humility is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to determine to be humble, to humble yourself. No man can humble you. No other person can humble you. You have to take the decision to pray and determine to humble yourself. My prayer today is that the spirit of Christ will touch us in a special way this day that in all our ways, we will humble ourselves the way God wants us to humble ourselves. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us. May your grace be made available to us to the extent, O oh God, that we will accomplish that which we determine to do for ourselves, which is, humil which is humbling ourselves by ourselves. This we ask in Jesus' name.
As we take the next in, the gate of steward will guide us as we give the seed of faith.
we shall take the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The twelfth day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Lord's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done and hurt as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save our nation. And you, their ministers, with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean in our hearts within us. The collect. O God, who hath the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend all thy open servants in all assets of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy difference, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the mighty of Jesus Christ, our Lord. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has simply brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same way thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always that which is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who is, who in your tender love towards mankind sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also to be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty and merciful God, who ate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make us new and contrite hearts, that we lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you the God all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, it is time for us to pray. Lord, 
we come in the volume of the books. It is written of us according to Psalm 143, verses 8 to 10. We thank you, Lord, for the word of your unfailing love this morning. And we put our trust in you, O oh God. We thank you for showing us the narrow way, which is the way of the kingdom. Because unto you, O oh Lord, we lift up our souls. Lord, teach us to do your will because you created us for your pleasure. You are indeed worthy to receive glory, honor, and power, O oh God. The heavens are your throne and the earth is your footstool. It is you that sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. You stretched out the heavens like a curtain and spread them like a tent to dwell in. You are Elohim and Adonai. You are El Shaddai, El Elyon. You spoke your word and brought everything to be. And you call those things that be not as though they are. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. Lord, you are the author of life and you gave that life to enlighten us. We say, hallowed be unto your name, O Lord. Your word, O God, became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Though being in the form of God, you made yourself of no reputation and took the form of a bond servant to become flesh. You humbled yourself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. As we pray, let us take the song. Crucified, laid behind a stone, you lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. Above all, crucified, crucified, laid behind a stone. You lay. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my Lord, you exalted Jesus and gave him the name which is above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, we ask and we pray that you teach us to be obedient to your way, to learn to be humble like you are, to love like you do. Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in our lives. Your kingdom, O oh God, is our priority and fulfilling our assignments is our pleasure. We pray, Lord, that you superimpose your will over the will of evil spirits and evil men. Let not evil come near our dwelling, O oh God. Rescue us from our enemies and dismantle evil powers working to frustrate our day, our activities, and our assignment. Lord, we declare that we have the mind of Christ that hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. We clothe ourselves with humility. Help us, O oh Lord, to renounce pride and arrogance. Father, you give grace to the humble, and therefore we humble ourselves under your mighty hand that in due time you may exalt us, O oh God. Lord, we cast the whole of our cares, our anxieties, our worries, our concerns for our future. We cast all of them upon you. And we thank you, Lord, for caring for us affectionately and watchfully. Lord, we expect a life of victory and awesome deeds because our actions are done on behalf of a spirit humbly submitted to your truth and righteousness. We appreciate your promise according to Zechariah 9, 12. That says today we receive the promise of double the restoration unto us in the name of Jesus. And according to Isaiah 61, verse 7, we declare, O Lord, that we have double honor instead of shame. We speak and dismantle the spirit of confusion we receive clarity of purpose in all our endeavors, leading to sounds of rejoicing in our homes in the name of Jesus. We possess a double portion of your blessings, your grace, your abundance this day, O oh Lord, and everlasting joy is ours in Jesus' name. Let us continue to pray that our thoughts will align with his so that everything we lay our hands on will prosper. His word says that all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Pray and ask God to open your inner eyes to see and grasp the immensity of his glorious power that he has for you. Pray for the fullness of his work and power that is available for those who trust him. And pray for the extravagant blessings of strength and energy in your mortal body as he has promised that the spirit that raised Jesus will work in you to quicken your physical body my brethren death and life are in the power of the tongue therefore declare right now wholeness to your body in every area of unease and disease by the power of the Holy Spirit those prayers ascend to God in the heavens. We speak to those parts, tissues, cells, organs. We say, hear the word of the Lord and be restored to wholeness in the name of Jesus. As we bring our prayers to a close, let us now pray for the Church of Nigeria, the Anglican Communion. We use our primate Henry as a point of contact. Let us pray for a revival through the fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit and that the sevenfold Spirit of God will be upon him. Let us pray that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Nigeria, but that it will stand as the ground and pillar of truth in these times in our nation. Let us remember our bishop and diocesan, Ephedola, and our vicar and archdeacon, John. And let us ask for God's special grace upon them to do the work 
he has called them to. As Solomon asked, we also ask that your special blessings of discernment and wisdom be upon them, O oh God. Let that special blessings of discernment and wisdom be upon them now and in the years to come. Lord, we ask that you grant them a bold and brave spirit to speak your precious word with clarity and conviction in their congregations and throughout the world in Jesus' name. And we pray for our nation, O oh God, that God will give our leaders wisdom to manage the affairs of this nation effectively. According to 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, it says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Lord, we intercede for the president, the vice president, the members of the House of Representatives, the senators, the judges, the policemen and women, as well as governors and local government chairmen, and for all those who are in authority over us in any way. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon them. And Father, we pray, take hold of Nigeria and shake evil out of Nigeria. We pray, Lord, that you dismantle diabolical ordinances, bills, and laws, change legislation, policies, procedures, statutes, regulations, and codes so that your will is performed in this nation without frustration or setback. We speak peace to every neurotic wind of chaos, armed resistance, terrorism, banditry, wars, and rumors of wars. Let the winds of the Spirit from all corners of the earth blow peace and prosperity onto this land. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And finally, Father, we pray that you revive our economy and make us a productive people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let us share the grace and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and forever. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. As the also's voice is leads us, we will give our offerings in their various envelopes. And as we give unto the Lord, may his hands of blessing rest upon us in Jesus' name. I serve a very big God, a very big God, oh. you know this woman is always by my side, I serve a very big God, serve a very big God, very big God,
Heavenly Father, in appreciation for your goodness in our lives, in our homes, in our businesses, career, and the journey throughout the week, we have come before you to give this to you. Lord, accept these are offerings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let it be unto us from you in this new week, blessing of abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. Good health, peace of mind, victories in our battles, and peace of mind in the name of Jesus Christ. May you multiply the one that remains in our hands in folds that is beyond our comprehension in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Accept us and accept our offerings in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will ask members of the Gideon Steward to come forward as we take ye servants of the Lord, the hymn, ye servants of the Lord. You shall take your pledge. All officers and members of the guild shall all together recite the pledge of the guild. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the grace bestowed upon these your servants, whom you have called into your service. Father, we thank you for the successful retreat that was held yesterday in preparation for the activities of this year. Lord, we thank you for what you have been using them to do in this church. 
We thank you, Lord God, for what you are going to do through them. Father, accept our praise and thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we know that aside from you, we can do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. Even as they come before your altar today, may you renew their strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They've read their pledge and made their vows. Father, we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will enable them to fulfill all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray specially for them today that as they labor in your vineyard, you will take care of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will take care of their homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And in your service, Heavenly Father, may your name be glorified. Amen. We pray that your blessings will be their portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. At all times and in all places, you will continue to guide them in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will never go astray. Amen. Your children will never be negatively influenced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we pray that you will make them to be faithful stewards in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord, at the end, they will receive gracious reward from you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ and for the service of God in this church, in this Ashdekere, and in this diocese, we rededicate you today in the name of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. Congratulations, 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 God bless you. Finally, we will invite Mrs. Fumi Layo Adediron to come forward for her birthday Thanksgiving. Ijile ninu ijile, eshe unu. Ijile ninu ijile, eshe unu. Ijile, ijile ninu ijile, eshe unu.
Father, we give you glory and honor. We thank you for your daughter who has come before you today, giving you thanks and praise. Heavenly Father, on the occasion of her birthday, she's thanking you, Lord God, because you have upheld her. She's thanking you for your mercy, for your protection, for your preservation, for your blessings in so many ways. Lord, accept a thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As she comes before you today, Lord, giving you thanks and acknowledging that you are the source of life. Father, we pray that you will renew her life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord look upon you with favor today. Amen. May he accept your thanksgiving. May he release upon you fresh grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that the Lord will fulfill your life. Amen. The lines will fall for you in pleasant places. Amen. The Lord will add life to your years and years to your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will continue to be your shield in the name of Jesus. Amen. His goodness will be your portion Amen. and the portion of your household. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The blessing of the Lord will rest with your family. Amen. And every member of your family shall enjoy the goodness of God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The banner of the Lord will be over your household. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And everything that belongs to you, the Lord will guide jealously. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By this time next year, your joy shall be bigger. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, every of your noble heart desire, they are released unto you. Amen. The Lord will bless your husband. Amen. The Lord will bless your children. Amen. Your children, they will climb the ladder of life. Amen. They will sit in places of honor. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And every one of you that has come today to rejoice with your, the daughter of God, we pray that the joy of the Lord will be your portion. Amen. We pray that the Lord will meet you at the point of your names. He shall always be well with you. Amen. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Amen. And unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Amen. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Congratulations. All me, you Sorry, 
the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Once again, we want to appreciate you for today, and we pray that the Lord God will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. We want to welcome anyone that is fellowshipping with us for the very first time. If today is your first day, we want you to kindly rise so that we can formally welcome you. Any person? More than good, more than good. You are something more than good. Because we love you just the way you are. You are something more. of our Lord Jesus Christ, and on behalf of the family of All Souls Church, we heartily welcome you into our midst. We appreciate your coming to fellowship with us today, and we pray that the blessing of the Lord will be your portion. And uh, as much as you are around, we want to see you again and again and again, and we pray that God will be kind to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming. God bless you in Jesus' name. If this week is your birthday, we want you to please rise so that we can celebrate with you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Praise the Lord. We congratulate you on the occasion of your birthday, and we pray that the blessing of the Lord will tabernacle with you in the name of Jesus Christ. On this occasion of your birthday, the heavens will be kind to you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Just want to remind us about our weekly program. This evening at 4 o'clock, one of us, Mrs. Ukamaka Onuche, will be celebrating her 50th birthday in a grand style, evening of, son, of, of praise, evening of praise, this evening at 4 o'clock. And so let us honor this daughter of Zion. And we pray that it shall be a successful program in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we have heard, today is the beginning of the Passion Week or the Holy Week. And from tomorrow, 6 o'clock daily, we shall be having services. Services on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, Eucharistic service on Thursday. And uh, like I normally would say that don't miss Thursday communion because that marks the inauguration of the Holy Eucharist. Then on Friday, we will have two services. The, one, the first one is at 9 a.m. for just an hour. That is the liturgy of the hour or liturgy of the world. 
And that service is important because it marks the hour when Christ was nailed to the cross. The second service is from 12 to 3. The three-hour service is equally important because it marks the three hours when darkness covered the whole world because the light of the world was hanging on the cross. The essence of the whole Lenten season is coming to an end with a Good Friday service and the Easter celebration. And so we want to appeal to us that we should be part of this week. If you've not done anything since the beginning of Lent, from today to Sunday, please do something. And God will bless you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. On that Thursday, somebody is also celebrating 70th birthday at 2 p.m. So it's going to be service in between service services on Thursday, Monday, Thursday at 2 p.m. The Easter Sunday celebration is next Sunday by the grace of God. And so let us bear this in mind. Praise the Lord. So other weekday communion remains the same all through the week. We publish the bond of marriage between Chigozi Stephanie Wanon and Olayenka Samuel Fajemi Rukun. If anyone knows any just cause in law, why they cannot be married, he or she should please see the vicar. This is the first time of asking. Praise the Lord. We want to thank you for always donating towards the church needs, and we pray that God will continue to bless you. We have this pressing need, item number three, sorry, number three on church need on page eight. Um, we need this combo a speaker for street evangelism as we commence our street evangelism in this Ash Dickenry very, very soon. And um, we need it like this week. And so if the Lord is ministering to anybody to help us to get this, we will greatly appreciate it and God will bless you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We want to thank the women for their sacrifice card, and we want to remind us that in the Diocese of Lagos, All Souls Church is the number one church when it comes to sacrifice card, and we cannot afford to go down. Clap for yourself now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we pray that we will continue to lead in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We want to draw your attention to the back of the bulletin. The Diocesan has appealed to all Anglicans in the Diocese of Lagos and all parishes that we should please use this last week of the Lenten season to pray for Nigeria, to pray for Nigeria in our individual homes and in our services. We have the prayer points at the back of the bulletin, and particularly on Friday, which is the Good Friday, we're going to pray specifically on this, and also to remind us of the Lagos Diocesan Press, and we pray that God will continue to bless you as you patronize us in Jesus' name. The Guest Guild, very soon, they will be having their Guest Guild Week. Guest, guest and Ladies' Guild Week. 
And so they are appealing to us that we should give them retiring offering today. And we pray that God will bless us as we give unto them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to crave your indulgence to please rise so that we'll take a prophetic declaration before we go. From 2 Kings chapter 25, verses 29 and 30, NIV, New International Version, please. If possible. All right. Let's take that together. So Jehoiachim put aside his prison clothes and for the rest of his life ate regularly at the king's table. The next verse. Day by day, the king gave Jehoiachim a regular allowance as long as he lived. We pray for you today that because you are a child of God and you are in this holy gathering today, every garment of shame, every garment of affliction, every garment of death, every garment of sickness is taken away from you and roasted with fire in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that the Lord will put on you the garment of honor, Amen. the garment of good health, Amen. the garment of longevity, Amen. the garment of prosperity, Amen. the garment of righteousness Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And because you serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords, we pray that God will regularly Meet your needs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From the treasury of heaven, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will provide for you. You will never descend into the valley of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus. You will never be in want of anything good in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will honor you and your children wherever they are under heaven. They shall, sit, they shall sit in places of honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The year song once. Lord be with you. Let us kneel for the benediction. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. That we draw.